Ooh-ra-ra-ra. This series is so in-depth in such a fun and masterful way. And unfortunately, I have only ever seen the first season. Now, before you bite my head off for that and being like, why are you even making this video? Go watch the rest of the series then. You gotta understand, I watched the anime about a year after it had come out in 2011, and I got like really, really, really into it. Because it's all about this, well, I want to say it's about one specific character, but no, it's about around 11 different characters, and all focuses on their lives in Ikubukuro, the entertainment district of Tokyo, Japan. But we kind of start off with this young boy named Mikado, who moves to Ikibukuro to attend a school with his childhood friend Masao Mekida and the eventual friend that they have named Sonohara. You know, this trio of friends who get to know each other, become close, and experience a lot of the bizarre goings on in Ikebukuro, a lot of times featuring specific people. The more primary characters, you have a very violent, crazy, super strong dude named Suzu Suzuo Hiwajima. His strength is the stuff of legends. He goes around picking up vending machines and street poles and stuff like that. For the most part, there's a lot of grounded stuff within this world, but whenever he appears, it just goes right out the window. And that's like the most overtly bizarre thing. He also has this rival in the form of the information broker, Isaiah Orihara. And they're like fated to just do battle whenever they lock eyes. Like it is a fight on sight with these guys. And Isaiah just has his hands in every little bit of dirty dealings going on around, on around Ikebukuro. If there's something weird going on, Isaiah usually knows about it. Not to mention various different gangs that just start to slowly pop up around the city. From the weird group known as the Dollars, a growing street gang, to two rival faction gangs called the Blue Squares and the Yellow Scarves, to another gang that seems, if I remember correctly, they're called Saika, and just how all these various different factions are just rising within Ikubukuro behind the scenes, and the kids, they end up just embroiled within this other side of this world. But the real enigmatic character is this person known as the Black Rider, a person who rides on a black motorcycle that reflects no light, has no headlights, and sounds like a horse whenever it goes by. And I remember first seeing this thing and just being so intrigued by it because the rider is said to be headless underneath their helmet. And the funny thing is, that's one of the more minor stories within this series as you enter into the first season. The depth, the intrigue, the twists, the turns, the various different angles, the introspection on characters, it is a wild environment. And the more interesting characters always end up bumping into each other in the most interesting ways. It is definitely a must watch and I'm so disappointed that I only ever watched the first season but by the time the second, third, fourth and so on seasons came out. Technically, it's just all the second season, but it's cut up into like three parts, and then it came out in 2015, and I remember being kind of mad because I had just been like, I had waited so long for this, and I had moved on to so many other things by this point. But thankfully, it came out around the time that the original light novel had come to its end, which you don't really see too often. A lot of times... A lot of light novels kind of hit a dead end, and they just went on this hiatus so that the anime was never able to adapt the rest of it. That happened a lot, especially in the late 2000s, early 2010s. You had plenty of series that had light novels that just 
hit a dead end because the author had something going on or they just weren't work didn't have enough to just push out soon enough so the anime just ended up going into limbo and you kind of just had to deal with that most of the time but it was like around 2015 2014 2016 that she just had this resurgence in all these series that actually managed to get an ending finally after years but i come from a time frame where having a series that just ends in an okay-ish place and you just have to deal with that is kind of what I'm used to. So having a series that actually was able to be re-picked up and have a definitive conclusion is a very foreign concept to me. So Durara is definitely a series that I need to get back into, especially because I can't, became kind of obsessed with it when the first season had come out. But when I knew that there wasn't going to be more anime for a hot minute, I got like really annoyed. And I really did consider reading the light novel because the light novel gives you a different feel and all that. But I ultimately was never able to get around to it. It, but the anime definitely did the light novel justice and who knows maybe one day I'll check it back out which is funny because like most light novel series it also had a sequel series called Durarara SH which is set a couple of years after the original series which Man, I kind of want to see that get adapted too, but it only has four volumes, and the last time that was updated was five years ago. So, yeah, I'm not getting my hopes up on that one. Like, why start a new novel and then you just go on hiatus for freaking five years, man? And that really is the sad part, too. It's just like the anime came back to conclude in. 2016 and for some reason 2016 seems to be the dead end stop for all things Durara like it seems like nothing in the series seems to go past 2016 from what I've seen and I wonder if that's maybe because the author ended up working on the bleach can't fear your own world books in like 2017 and it seems like he has like a whole bunch of other side projects and stuff that he ended up just picking up by that point from working on stuff for the fate series to a whole new manga series honestly it seems as though the guy just kind of left durara behind which is a shame but at least the original series finished if nothing else the original series finished. And that's more than you could say for most series. So tell me, how important is it that I just get my shit together and finish Durara? Did you see the series? Did you enjoy it? Who was your favorite character? Or have you ha yet to check it out? Please, check it out. It is a fun series to read, to watch. Even in manga form, it's still pretty solid, though the art isn't the absolute best. It's the intrigue that really drives it forward. So let me know your feelings in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. And until next time, I've been Deuce Dizden, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>